Hello, I'm Antonio and welcome to my Backyard Truck Builds on a Budget. The Off-Roader, the first truck I ever acquired, my first Mitsubishi, uh, a few years ago now, but she's been stood here two years, you can see she's going green. Not doing very well just couldn't bring myself to uh, break her up for parts and uh, now that I've decided um, to start this channel I've decided to bring her back to life a lot of works needed as you can see as we go around there's a lot of engine work there'll be a lot of maintenance work underneath brakes to redo axles to re-see chassis to re-weld a lot of welding on the chassis and the bodywork as well so uh, it'll be all round but we're going to change her from a standard truck to a proper off-road truck might get rid of the wings maybe uh, substitute by um, tubular wings and uh, tubular bumpers and things we'll see as we go along we'll just build on this one as we go along it is on a budget this one so uh, this is the first one we're going to start off and we need to start off with uh, seeing if the engine will uh, get going so today we're going to make a start on the old rust bucket being parked up for nearly two years now so the problem was it she snapped the cam belt as you can see while I was on the motorway and I did take it to uh, a garage as you can see most of it's been disassembled they've had a look at it and uh, it was deemed not worth taking the risk to just put a cam belt on and change the rockers you can see the rockers here some of them are snapped and trying to get it going again so but uh, what I want to attempt to do is uh, because I know it is an interference engine because logically you can see they snapped at the top but uh, sometimes some people have been lucky enough to just change the rockers put the timing belt in time it in and it might just start again I thought I'd uh, speed up the video at this point because I'm uh, sure you don't want to see me take off uh, any uh, bumpers or bodywork or anything you've clicked on for a reason and that's for the cam belt so I'm trying to get it, it as quick as I can as you can see just a disclaimer just to say I'm not a mechanic I'm not a bodywork repairsman or a welder or anything it's just that uh, through the years I've acquired a little bit of experience and uh, I just thought uh, it might help other people maybe have an idea how some jobs are done you know, I was always querying how to put on a cam belt or anything else, so maybe it's a good idea to understand when jobs get done what's actually going on. And maybe encourage others to take on maybe some tasks where they can, but like I said, this is for me, uh, my projects, and uh, hope some people can feed off it and maybe get some good ideas. Okay, so I could be doing this wrong, but... Uh... I've decided to take the rockers off because uh, it seems like the lower pulley that I'm trying to loosen it is going round and if there is anything forcing against the valves because now everything is out of alignment I don't want it to cause any more damage if it hasn't caused any so already okay I'm just gonna loosen all the top bolts And maybe we've got a little bit more to look at that. There we go. And out we come. You can actually see one of broken. I'm actually come off the shaft. It's another one that's uh, Split. It's still, see it here, the rock is still holding it on. Okay, so we're taking them off. So everything's been stripped back, bottom pulleys off, everything else. As you can see there, the balance belt is still on, but we're going to be changing that. 
So as we're working on it, I think one of the problems is I didn't use this truck that much. It may be be stood for six or seven to even 12 months and then I'd take it out maybe for a month or so and then park it up again. But in the meantime, when I was going off-roading, you can see that uh, all the mud had caked inside. I think that's what's caused, more than anything, the belts to perish inside. So, like I said, all the time I've had it six or seven years, maybe I haven't used it all that much. Don't think I've put more than about 2,000 miles on it, 3,000. Didn't use it that much at all. So, here we go. I think it's time to just clean it up and then we'll take it from there. So now I've actually cleaned some of the uh, mud that was inside it. As you can see here, there's quite a bit. I've highlighted all the timing marks, as you can see, with a white marker. So even the balance belt. And as you can see, it seems like this corner of the balance belt Seeing the, that pulley seems to be out about a tooth or more. But then again, I put my finger on this belt, it's uh, really slack, really loose. So I think it could be stretched anyway on its way out. We're going to change that anyway. And let's try putting it, putting a new one on, doing the right job if we can. So we have the new balance belt tensioner on. Just before I start mounting the balance belts and everything, I just wanted to highlight that it's important just to, for the moment, as you can see this actually is spring loaded, so the bolts are loose. What I'll be doing is sending it back, can you see? And before I put the belt on, I'll be tightening it up in that position. Once the belt's on, then what we can do is then Tension the belt up by just releasing it, it'll fall back on the spring and it should tension the belt up adequately and you can tighten up the bolt. Okay, now that all the timing marks seem to uh, be where they should be, you can take the tension off the pulley. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then now we can tighten everything up. Now it's tensioned. There we go. Okay. That's it for now. So here we have that second belt installed, the main belt. You can see, and again, make sure your timing marks are all where they should be. Everywhere. You can see sometimes they don't look aligned because let's say the camera takes a certain angle. And we're ready to release the pressure off the tensioner. I should see it spring in a moment now. Maybe not. There we go. That should spring back. There we go. There we go. And we're uh, under tension. Now these actually go talk to 26 Newton force on them, Newton meter. And the way to do it when we actually do torque them up, now I'm just temporarily going to just tighten it a little bit, is always to tighten the top one first. So just to make sure that everything is should be running like it should do, what we're going to do is we're going to give two rotations on the crank and everything should align itself up again as it is now. So let's find out. Working away clockwise. 
So, if we have a look at that, we should be able to see that uh, the timing marks bottom one, more difficult to see. Everything's gone back where it should be, which means we're right. So at this point, what I'm going to do for the last time is just because now it should have adjusted the belt as well, just loosen off the tensioner a bit. And the same for this one. And I will be tightening them up to the 26 Newton meters. So, like we said, we want top first. Put it the wrong way around. Oop. There we go. Popped out quick. Do the same for the bottom, so where the adjuster is first. Okay, and again for the lower. Okay, and that's locked in. And that's all done. So everything's on, power's on, battery's on. Let's see uh, for the first time in two years if she starts. And she starts. Well, success. Okay, let's finish assembling and uh, see if we can keep her running. Thank you to everybody for clicking on the video and watching the video. Uh, what I'm going to do from here is uh, put the radiator on, airbox and all the ancillaries, see if I can get it running properly before we invest in new radiators, you know, water pump and things like that, and making sure the engine is okay before we invest more time then we can carry on to the bigger modifications and uh, hopefully getting this truck on the road again to enjoy a little bit more time off-road till the next one goodbye